Hi dear students, let's talk about the spoilage of cereal products. Cereal products as we know, there are various cereal products which we come across in our day to day life. There may be raw cereals just like as we take in our day to day lives like rice, barley, uh, wheat and etc. But also we come across various other cereal products like we have bakery items, refrigerated doves, fresh pasta products, dried cereal products, snack foods, bakery mixes. Like that the conception of cereal products is being found to be higher in, in today's world. And these products are subjected to physical as well as chemical and microbiological spoilage which would affect the taste, aroma as well as the leavening, uh, appearance and the overall quality of the end consumer product. No consumer would like to have a wet rice when he buys it or he would not like to buy uh, some grains which are being found to be infested with some fungus or which is having some ropey thread like structures on it. You never buy a bread which has been found to contain fungal spores or which is having molds on it. We always prefer cereal products or cereals which are being found to be not infested by, by the microbes. Even sometimes you can find that physical damage as well as chemical damage also happens to the cereal products. If you go to look into the various cereal products, you have bread at the room temperature about, uh, it lasts for about 5 to 7 days. The shelf life of bread has been found to be 5 to 7 days. And if you go to refrigerate it, it can last for about 1 to 2 weeks and freeze it for 3 months. Whereas you have downwards which last at a room temperature of about 4 to 5 days and you don't refrigerate it normally. And if you go to freeze it, you can store it to 3 months and rice as we the pure rice or the normal rice raw rice which we have can be stored to about one year to about six months and uh, if you want to freeze it probably after cooking you freeze it of course you only the cooked ones you freeze it you can freeze it up to six months and if you go to have pasta, uh, the raw ones can be only at raw room temperature you will keep it and for two years you can store it. So the shelf life of all these cereal products will be found to be varied and during this time there are chances of these uh, cereal products to get spoiled. Though microorganisms are ubiquitous in nature uh, and they have a potential of causing food spoilage as well as food borne diseases, uh, compared to the other categories of food products, the bakery products rarely cause food poisoning. It's mainly because the heat which has been applied during baking as well as frying usually eliminates these pathogenic as well as the spoilage, spoilage causing microbes and uh, also it will also result in the formation of a low moisture content. And all these factors usually doesn't result in the food spoiling, food poisonings which have been caused by, by the bakery products. But you can see that uh, though there is no much food poisoning instances, we come across to a situation which the microbial spoilage of these products have been found to be very much high. And they also result in various economic losses. And malts are the most common uh, spoilage causing organism in the baked goods because their ability to grow in a relatively reduced water activity levels. And other than that, you can also see various bacteria, yeast, as well as malts. And the type and number of the microorganisms present in these cereal products are dependent upon the microbiological quality of the raw materials. Uh, the processing steps during the manufacture of these products, the hygienic conditions which have been done during the production, the properties of the products which could affect the microbial growth as well as the storage and the distribution conditions. Now earlier we had told about there is an economic loss by the growth of uh, these uh, fungus as well as the malls on the bakery products or the cereal products. Now what you have to see of the economic loss. Even the common bread that we have, we can see that uh, almost 5% of the total cost of the bread is being contributed by the spoilage which it 
courses. Almost 5% of the bread has been returned to the bakeries as unsellable and this could account to approximately 600 million pounds of bread annually. So, a major cause of economic loss is mainly due to the presence of moles as well as um, various other microbial agents even when we consider the common bread that we have. Various microbes are involved in the spoilage of cereal and cereal products. You can have basically mostly it has been found to be fungi. Most predominant source are being found to be as fungi. You can have aspergillus uh, which is growing in the case of you can see the black type of molds which are growing on the uh, bread as well as on grains and candida, cladosporium, cladiceps purpura which causes ergotism, then fusarium, penzelium, rhizopus. The common bread mold is a rhizopus uh, which produces a black mold type one. You have saccharomyces which gives a yeasty smell towards the bread as well as pasture as well as psychosaccharomyces is also another yeasty type of uh, fungus which grows in cereal and cereal products. Apart from this, we can also see that various bacteria such as Bacillus, Clostridium, Lactobacillus as well as Neocornosta would also grow uh, on bread and uh, sometimes the bread would get a sliminess or sometimes a ropey nature of the bread could also result. Now the ropiness in bread as we mentioned earlier, it is mainly due to the bacterial growth and it is considered to be uh, more prevalent in the homemade breads and the chief causative agent of this particular ropiness of bread is Bacillus subtilis or Bacillus lichenifermis. And sometimes you can also find that uh, the bread has been found to be red or bloody stained or it is referred to as a bloody bread uh, because of the presence of a bacteria called Ceratia narcissans. Ceratia has been found to be a pinkish red called not exact red but a slight pinkish tinge comes when Ceratia grows and sometimes the bread would get a red color or a blood tinge so it is referred to as a bloody bread also. And you can also find on the bread sometimes moldiness. These are the two predominant uh, type of uh, spoilages which could be present on cereals, uh, cereal products such as bread and all that. And uh, these moldiness is mainly because of the presence of fussy molds which are growing on the back on the bread. And the spores will travel through the air inside the package and grow on the other parts of the bread also. And uh, they are what and these are the ones which give the uh, bread different colors now there could be different types of molds growing and depending upon that the color of the mold also would be different so ropiness and moldiness is uh, one of the most predominant result of uh, spoilage of the cereal products now the factors which influence the microbial growth Ambient temperatures as well as the product pH levels between of about 5.5 to 5.4 to 7.5 as well as the water activities in the range of 0.75 to 0.98 will promote the spoilage of bacteria, the rope forming bacteria, molds as well as the yeast. And water activity is uh, it plays an important role to prevent the spoilage of cereal products. And many bakery products such as breads and cakes have a water level of about 0.94. You might have noticed something. If you have uh, the spoilage of bread and if you go to compare the spoilage of bread and spoilage uh, of rusk, you can find that the spoilage of bread has been found to be more than that the rusk. Why is this? Because in rusk, the water activity has been found to be less. And as a result, what happens? Uh, the water is less and so what the chance of spoilage has been found to be less and although relatively harmless you can find that the, even the presence of these microbes might sometimes deter the customers and uh, it would result into the substantial economic loss to the wholesale bakeries in addition to this something which we have to think about is the mycotoxins 
Other than the presence of uh, fungus, you can also find that various secondary metabolites or various such as mycotoxins can be produced by various fungi in grains as well as cereal products and it is a major concern because of the high incidence of small spoilage of these materials. Specific uh, spoilage fungi, especially Aspergillus as well as Fusarium, they will produce mycotoxins when they grow on uh, food commodities as well as animal feedstuffs. You can notice that aflatoxins, which have been produced by Aspergillus flavus, Aspergillus parasiticus and other closely related fungi, as well as the fumonisins, which have been produced by Fusarium verticaloides, as well as the deoxynivalenol or the DON or the vomitoxin, which has been produced by Fusarium graminearium. These are the principal mycotoxins which have been produced in grains and the cereal products. Of course, you do remember the clav Claviceps purpura, which will result in ergotism. Also, this is also a type of uh, mycotoxin which is being produced by various fungi when they grow on the cereal products. So, we will be continuing in the next session on the methods uh, to prevent the contamination and the spoilage of cereal and cereal products. Thank you for now for your kind attention. Let's continue in the next sessions.